Oh, that reminds me, Jamie, I got this uh, email and I wanted to read it. Um, Hi, everyone. I'm very new to the show, but my wife isn't. You've managed to radicalize her into a full democratic socialist. So congratulations on that. I think I describe myself as a social democrat because I think that a superb social safety net plus tightly regulated capitalism is best. But I'm also now just seeing how incredibly broad the term socialism is, and I feel more confused than ever. Anyway, my question is this. In a society with no private business capitalism, how do you maintain creative freedom, especially for non-necessities, niche products, and outlandish slash risky ideas, or the kinds of products that people don't know they want until they have them? As an example of all the above, let's say that someone has a great but unorthodox idea for a video game that caters to some specific audience. This game needs a big team with lots of different skills and widely different uh, levels of passion for the project. How do you incentivize the non-passionate to do boring or difficult, though not unethical, work without paying them? Even for the passionate, it could be difficult to retain their labor on something long and at times frustrating. I've given up on enough personal projects to know that very well. Uh, I'm interested in hearing all of your responses. I mean, I think what he's talking about with not paying is more communism, right, Jamie? Yeah, I mean, there's lots of different versions of socialism and communism that people have posited. I think with something like a video game, which I think most people can agree is not uh, something that's really essential for everybody to survive. Although, you know, people may disagree on that. Matt may disagree on that. Um, It's going to require everyone who's working on it to be passionate about it. And that's the idea behind communism, at least for me, right? It's to liberate people from having to work all the time at a job that they don't like very much on pain of starvation and devote their full creative potential to whatever drives them and whatever keeps them passionate. So if you need a whole bunch of other people to work on your passion project with you, you better hope that it's a really good idea and then they will. But what if, what if there are things that need to be done on the project that um, are just not, I mean, as he says, I mean, just take for, you know, as a, uh, just to stipulate for the sake of this, um, the game needs a big team with lots of different skills, widely different levels of passion for the project. How do you incentivize the non-passionate to do boring or difficult, though not unethical work without paying them? Get a better idea. <laughs> Otherwise, maybe your idea isn't that great in the first place. Sorry, I, mean, I don't. I don't see the video game problem being like a primary thing that communists need to deal with. I think the more pressing issue is like, oh, how do you incentivize people to do work that might be considered uh, undesirable, like taking out the trash or whatever? Um, and you know, in my experience living in communal situations, that isn't necessarily the primary issue at play. I think I'd be happy to do trash duty for a day if it meant that I was contributing something positive positive and everyone got to have a nice life and I got to go off and have a nice life the rest of the time. I mean, I would just say that one of the, you know, ideals of a more socialist or communist economy is that y- what you do for work is decoupled from your ability to, to sustain yourself just materially. And I think that would allow for a lot more people to follow their passions. I think for instance, if all of a so sudden, wait, just let me just explain what that means to people. Okay. That means that like healthcare Right. Maybe in housing. Right. Maybe in education. Transportation. uh, Transportation. Those are not things that are commodities. Therefore, you don't have to worry about paying for them. Uh, And then, um, and that, you know, once that's done, then you have the ability to go out and uh, and pursue the occupation you want. So that, like, okay, I can do this because I can make the trade off between like my ability to go buy, you know, or you know, take this trip or buy this thing with, you know, how much I want from, uh, from, you know, self-satisfaction from my job. And it's not a question of like, if I don't do this job that I hate, my kids won't have health care. Right. Exactly. And it, perfectly. Yeah. And I think the same thing is for like, we see all these journalism jobs escaping and it's like, well, we can't really subsidize them directly as we used to, right? The mail was a big subsidy to them. How do we, uh, create an environment where we can cultivate these jobs. And I think, yeah, it's those decommodifying essentials. And then we can, I think, I think people will, I think there will be a lot of, my ideal of a socialist future does have a lot of sort of uh, uh, voluntary 
game makers that have all their stuff collected because i think people would rather do that than make some crappy video game right about a marvel property um mm -hmm. so like i think the, the the actual creative people will be more liberated in that sense i mean i'm less interested in getting rid of all sort of private industry immediately um that sort of thing like i think or maybe you make everything co-ops legally or like change the ownerships of that sort of i don't know how you because you don't want to have to like have like state control of every video game put out right like that's not a ideal of idea of communism i would want um especially knowing our political class um currently so anyway what do you say jamie i say let a million video games bloom I mean, I could uh, I could go into more details on um, how Marx wanted to actually abolish the distinction between work and leisure time and have all human activities just be things that we do in the course of life. Doesn't mean they're all going to be fun, but they're all just a part of life. And that's when we can really say that uh, people are truly free. But I feel like uh, maybe that's a topic for the Antifada to go into further detail on. Folks can get uh, can find that at patreon.com slash the Antifada. But just one last uh, point on what Matt is saying. If you had the federal government, let's say, <clears throat> essentially subsidize, fully provide, however you want to talk about it, health insurance, housing, transportation, and, and you know, this is this is Matt's formula, transportation, education. Then as a reporter, let's just say for the LA Times, all I would need is, I don't know, let's just say $20,000 a year to live a pretty good life. Maybe the number is 30000 Maybe it's, I don't know what it is. And, um, and then as the LA Times, all I have to pay is twenty or $30,000 to that reporter and I can afford a lot more reporters. And then with the extra profits, theoretically, that the LA Times would make because of that, that gets paid in taxes to the government. So what you have is, and the reason why that's better than paying it directly to the reporters in that instance is because the reporter then has the freedom of going to other places and working if they want and not have to worry about all of those things like health insurance, like their education, like, uh, you know, maybe uh, where they live or how they, uh, with their transportation. So the same amount of money churns around more or less. It's just that there is um, less, it's really a question of control at that point. And the conservatives fear that the government will have control, but we have a lot more power over government, frankly, than we do um, corporations. And to the extent that we don't have power over our government at this point, it is because of the power that corporations and moneyed interests have because they are basically have turned our blue our our democracy into a plutocracy because they were a plutonomy yep oh and another function that would serve because reporters do get paid very crappily in most cases and the media is disproportionately drawn from the upper classes and you can see the implications for that in the kinds of news and the kinds of stories that we get so maybe if people had these needs taken care of the media wouldn't be a, completely a club full of rich kids Right, the system would be different. You would, you know, uh, people would be the the people who are seeking internships wouldn't just be people whose parents could afford to subsidize uh, their summer. It would be everybody. You would take money out of the equation as a determining factor as to what opportunities are available to you. 